Captain Ibrahim Trowore is on a mission to transform Africa. May he awaken the youths of Africa in this process, and even more. Traoré's efforts to empower the next generation are paying off. The young people are living up to his expectations. To protect Burkina Faso, new drone pilots have recently surfaced. What though, set off this renewed zeal? Let's investigate. Let's be honest. Burkina Faso is rewriting the Sahelian norms of warfare under Captain Ibrahim Traoré. Large swaths of this territory have been terrorized by rebel groups for years, using its untamed landscape, lack of monitoring, and antiquated military strategies to attack, flee, and reorganize with little danger of being apprehended. However, things have changed since the advent of drones and not just any drones, but cutting-edge AES versions. Let us stop you there if you believe this to be merely another tactical maneuver or a brief military update. Drone warfare's emergence in Burkina Faso is more than just a revolutionary development. This paradigm shift has the potential to affect counterinsurgency strategies throughout the entire area. Anyone who writes this off as a mere improvement is ignorant of how warfare will develop in the future. We are aware of the naysayers today. They will claim that drone warfare is risky, careless, and even cruel. But really, what's their answer? Sending troops into ambushes only to have them perish and cause collateral damage to civilians. The reality is straightforward. Why wouldn't we destroy important rebel commanders and seriously disrupt insurgent networks without risking the lives of any soldiers? Show us a more effective method for locating rebels who are holed up in mountain caves or isolated deserts. You can't. Traditional military tactics just cannot match the surgical accuracy that drones offer, and they accomplish this without endangering the lives of defenseless citizens or soldiers. Every military wants to be able to execute targeted strikes without causing collateral damage. This is made possible by drones, so why don't we embrace it? Not to mention Colonel Asimi Goita of Mali, who is totally in favor of this drone partnership with Captain Troware. It is no coincidence that these two military chiefs are working together. Their strategic action demonstrates their awareness of the changes in contemporary combat. Together, they have made investments to create a drone force that can track, monitor, and kill once untouchable insurgents. Provide us with any evidence to the contrary, or even better, acknowledge that drone warfare is the revolutionary development that Africa's armed forces sorely need. However, we're only beginning to explore. Burkina Faso's situation is a part of a broader trend in which African countries who have been hindered by insurgencies for a long time are using technology to level the playing field. Drone deployment is more than simply a military strategy. It's a sign of creativity and resiliency in an area where volatility has long been the norm. Now, let's pose the crucial query. How has Burkina Faso's military policy changed as a result of drone warfare? The issue of insurgency in Burkina Faso is not new. Insurgent groups have been using the Sahelian landscape as a weapon and a shield for years. These insurgents have been able to operate virtually unhindered by the region's enormous, unguarded landmasses, which range from isolated deserts to deep woods. They have become experts at guerrilla warfare taking advantage of the military's antiquated ground tactics and lack of modern infrastructure. Like many other African countries, Burkina Faso was engaged in a conflict that was unwinnable with its current tactics. Until the arrival of drones, Burkina Faso's strategy for fighting wars has drastically changed after the advent of AES drones. Let's not mince words. Previously able to blend into the landscape Insurgents are now being pursued by machines that are always on, never sleep, and never get tired. These drones are outfitted with night vision, thermal imaging, and artificial intelligence, AI, 
powered tracking technologies that let the military keep an eye on insurgent activities in real time, irrespective of the weather or time of day. Having eyes in the sky isn't enough. It's about having eyes with intelligence that can quickly detect, monitor, and report insurgent activity. Burkina Faso's army were mired in a cycle of reactionary warfare prior to the deployment of drones. Following an attack, soldiers were sent out to pursue shadows in the jungles, mountains, or deserts. Using the terrain to their advantage, insurgents had mastered the art of escape, attack, and retreat. Because they were outnumbered and unaccustomed to the terrain, foot soldiers were at a disadvantage, and insurgents were able to maneuver freely and exploit the military's blind spots. Although they were helpful for bombardment, manned aircraft frequently caused collateral damage and lacked the surgical accuracy needed to strike specific objectives concealed amid civilian populations. Drones, however, have altered the rules. These self-governing devices provide a degree of monitoring and accuracy that was previously unachievable. The military no longer has to send ground forces into uncharted, hazardous areas because to drones. They can now fly over insurgent hideouts and, when the time is right, execute precision-guided strikes. Let us pose this question to you. Drones can destroy targets without anyone on the ground. So why risk the lives of soldiers in dangerous situations? Here is the secret, though. Training is just as important as technology. Local pilots who have received intensive training to operate these machines efficiently are the key to the success of this drone program. These drones are not being flown by foreign contractors thousands of miles away. These are military troops from Burkina Faso, trained to operate drones in their native environment. The military is no longer reliant on costly military assistance or foreign contractors. Instead, a local answer to a local issue, they have created a self-sufficient defense system. The military of Burkina Faso has been able to become more proactive as a result of this strategy change, spotting and eliminating militants before they can begin attacks. Drones have enabled the military to launch preemptive strikes, damaging insurgent activities before they start, in contrast to the past when they were constantly lagging behind. Furthermore, nothing demoralizes an adversary more than realizing that their activities are being monitored, that their hiding places are no longer secure, and that their capacity to reorganize has been jeopardized. Burkina Faso's military has evolved from a reactive force to a highly technologically sophisticated, adaptable fighting machine thanks to the deployment of drones. The results are already apparent on the ground, and this is no small accomplishment. For the first time in years, Burkina Faso is not merely battling to survive. The insurgents are now on the defense. It's a battle for victory. The battlefield has already been impacted by Burkina Faso's incorporation of drones into its military strategy. However, what specific role have drones played in taking out important insurgent leaders? Add your voice to the total liberation of Africa by leaving a comment in the comments section below. Please do not forget to subscribe for more informative videos like this one. Let's continue. It is easy to concentrate on the technology while discussing drone warfare. The true narrative is in the outcomes, not in the machines hovering overhead collecting intelligence, or launching precision-guided munitions. The removal of important insurgent leaders who, up until now, were untouchable has been one of the most important results of Burkina Faso's drone program. Let us pose this question to you. How do you believe the military of Burkina Faso would have been able to locate and eliminate insurgent leaders who were concealed far inside rebel-controlled areas if drones hadn't been invented? We're not referring to a few insignificant field commanders. We are discussing the top executives. Guerrilla warfare, a network of informants, and a thorough understanding of the terrain allowed insurgent leaders to keep one step ahead of conventional military troops and avoid capture for years. There are numerous instances where drones were used to apprehend insurgent group leaders. The thing is this. 
Conventional military tactics, such as the use of ground forces, frequently allow for civilian casualties and collateral damage. However, because of their extreme precision, drones can eliminate militants without posing a threat to the lives of bystanders in the area. Critics of drone warfare frequently claim that drones eliminate the human element and make battle too impersonal. But consider this, would you rather witness a full-scale ground assault that puts hundreds of lives in danger, or would you rather witness a drone strike that eliminates an insurgent commander with no civilian casualties? The decision is obvious. The psychological effects of these strikes should also be considered. Once invincible insurgent leaders are now fleeing, they are aware that drones are watching them all the time, following their whereabouts, and waiting for the ideal opportunity to attack. This has caused chaos among rebel groups. It is difficult for leaders to plan attacks, find fighters and keep control of their areas since they are scared to travel freely. Once operating with impunity, insurgents are now in survival mode, always watching their backs because they know that a drone may be watching them at any time. The bigger concern still stands even if Burkina Faso has made great strides in removing important insurgency leaders. In what ways does Troware inspire young people to pursue careers like drone piloting? By fusing modern technology, national pride, and the prospect of a better future, Captain Ibrahim Troware inspires Burkina Faso's youth to pursue careers like drone piloting. He has purposefully presented these positions as vital duties that have a direct bearing on the safety, development, and independence of the nation rather than just as employment prospects. According to Troure, the future of Burkina Faso rests on its young people, and he has been aggressively encouraging them to take on challenges, particularly in fields vital to the country's scientific advancement and defense. In order to involve the youth, Troare highlights how important they are to maintaining the nation's sovereignty and defense against outside threats. He portrays occupations such as drone flying as chances to make a major contribution to the country. An excellent illustration of the type of high-skilled work that Troare is advocating is drone technology, which is becoming more and more important in contemporary combat and surveillance. He connects these responsibilities to a larger goal, the protection and advancement of a powerful, independent Burkina Faso. He instills a strong feeling of pride and duty in the youth by emphasizing that they have the responsibility for the country's future, which inspires them to view these professions as both a personal and a national vocation. Traoré is also aware that inspiration is insufficient on its own. He has combined this with real investments in education and training for young people. Burkina Faso has developed educational programs under his direction that give young people the technical know-how needed for contemporary professions like cybersecurity, engineering, and drone flying. Young people from a variety of backgrounds can participate in these vital fields since these programs are made to be easily accessible and provide practical experience with cutting-edge technology. In addition to inspiring young people, Traoré is equipping them with the skills they need to succeed in a quickly evolving technology environment by making these opportunities accessible. Additionally, Traoré has made a conscious effort to create a culture that values prominent occupations like drone piloting. He sets an example for others to follow by sharing tales of young drone pilots who are actively advancing national security. These achievements demonstrate the significance of these roles and support the notion that youth may directly and significantly influence the future of their nation. By demonstrating that high-tech positions are not only accessible, but also essential to Burkina Faso's development, the prominence of these young professionals also helps to dispel long-standing hurdles and stereotypes about particular occupations. Traoré's strategy for empowering young people goes beyond the technical side of things. He emphasizes national duty and patriotism, reminding young people that their efforts, whether in the fields of agriculture, technology, or the military, are essential to Burkina Faso's economic power and independence. 
Traoré appeals to young people's natural desire to be a part of something bigger than themselves by presenting occupations like drone flying as essential to the country's mission. He has been effective in crafting a story in which these responsibilities are not only occupations, but rather acts of duty and patriotism, which is what they are. Furthermore, his government has actively promoted the accomplishments of young professionals, especially in fields like technology and military. Demonstrating Troware's recognition of the significance of fostering an atmosphere where young people feel their efforts are valued and respected. Since they witness directly how their efforts are valued and recognized at the highest levels, more young people are inspired to pursue these careers as a result of this public acknowledgement. Traore makes sure that young people are not only ready but also want to assume such significant roles by cultivating this culture of respect and acknowledgement. Can other African countries, however, adopt this drone warfare technique to combat insurgency? The triumph of drone warfare in Burkina Faso has not gone unnoticed. Other countries are attentively observing the devastation caused by rebel groups throughout Africa, wondering if they might use this approach to fight their own insurgencies. Let's address the actual question first, though, before delving into whether they can. Why haven't more African countries taken this action already? Drones are costly, according to critics, and demand a degree of technical know-how that many African nations lack. But a closer look reveals that those criticisms are unfounded. For example, Nigeria has been fighting the rebel group Boko Haram for more than 10 years. Like the rebels in Burkina Faso, Boko Haram avoids arrest by using guerrilla warfare isolated locations, and difficult terrain. Nigeria has depended on conventional military tactics. Special forces, airstrikes, and ground soldiers have all been used to try to quell the insurgency, with varying degrees of success. However, Nigeria might have the advantage with drones. Instead of depending on antiquated intelligence or deploying troops into locations where they are attacked by militants, the Nigerian military might use drones to provide real-time surveillance in places where Boko Haram members are known to operate. Critics would argue that drones are too costly for a nation like Nigeria to operate extensively. How much do they currently spend on conventional warfare, we ask? Ground patrols, manned aircraft, and logistical support are less efficient and more expensive. Even though they require an initial investment, drones end up being more economical over time. Not to mention the human cost. How many Nigerian soldiers lost their lives in ambushes that drone surveillance could have prevented? Somalia is one another glaring illustration. Somalia has long been at war with Al-Shabaab, a rebel organization that uses uncontrolled areas in the country's outlying areas to conduct assaults throughout East Africa. Al-Shabaab soldiers sometimes mix in with civilian populations or vanish into Somalia's vast, unmonitored countryside. Despite the Somali military's efforts to combat these terrorists through airstrikes and ground operations with assistance from African Union forces, Somalia may keep a close eye on these isolated regions by using drones to monitor insurgent activities and stop attacks before they occur. Preventive measures are more important than reactive ones. The secret to achieving Burkina Faso's success, however, is right here. Independence. Simply purchasing drones from foreign nations is insufficient. African countries need to make investments in infrastructure development, pilot training, and the development of a military-capable autonomous drone operations. The indigenous expertise that has been established to fly these drones is just as important to Burkina Faso's drone program success as the technology itself. This model has to be adopted by other African nations. Let's talk about one more critique. This degree of independence is beyond the means of African countries. For these systems to be maintained, they will constantly require outside contractors. Really? African countries already spend billions on foreign contractors and military assistance. They may create a defensive system that is self-sufficient and sustainable by investing in local knowledge. Although there may be significant upfront expenses, 
there are significant long-term advantages. Lastly, think about the geographical effects. Mali, Niger, and Chad are three African countries dealing with comparable insurgencies that ought to work together to exchange intelligence, combine resources, and conduct cooperative drone operations. Why fight against insurgencies when they don't respect borders? Drones can be used to detect insurgent movements, monitor large regions of land, and perform simultaneous strikes that disrupt insurgent operations across numerous countries, allowing African states to unite against insurgency through regional cooperation. In conclusion, Burkina Faso's drone warfare achievement is only the beginning. The AES drones and pilots with local training have demonstrated that despite overwhelming obstacles, the balance of power can be shifted by creativity and independence. There is a clear way forward for African countries to present a unified front against insurgency, embrace technology, make investments in your people, and collaborate. African security's future depends on creativity, independence, and cooperation. If not, the continent could lag behind in the struggle for peace and stability. Do you believe the young person is aware of what has to be done? Is Africa gaining power at last? Can anyone else stop Africans from taking over? Tell us what you think in the comments section below. We explore the rich history, culture, and the ongoing struggle for sovereignty in Africa. Join us in this important conversation by subscribing to our channel. By subscribing, you're not just staying informed, you're becoming part of a movement dedicated to reclaiming Africa's rightful place on the global stage. Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss an episode. Let's work together to spread knowledge and inspire change. Thanks for watching.